Hey everybody, welcome back to Small Groups. I hope you guys are having an absolute amazing time in your small groups. I have so much enjoyed this semester as we have been diving into the Word of God. Uh, we've taken a little bit of a different approach this semester with our curriculum where we have, we have done a Bible study together. Uh, typically, we have done either something topical around a specific subject and discussed that, or we've done a book in the past. Um, but this time, I, I love how we have taken, taken multiple chapters from the Word of God and, uh, and really just dove into that, uh, discussed that as a group. Um, the, the objective of these lessons as we teach this is, is not about it even being so much of a lesson as it has been about just sharing some of the things that we are getting out of this as in our personal study time uh, and then hoping that you and your study time and what you are uh, exploring as you read these chapters and you're bringing that to the group and discussing it. I, I hope I hope you've enjoyed it. I know for me, the group that I'm a part of, it has been so awesome. Um, we have had some really, really great biblical discussions. What I feel like we have really genuinely studied the Word of God together this semester, and it's been so exciting. It's been a really, really fun journey, and I'm glad to be continuing that tonight uh, or today, depending on when your group is. Uh, I'm, I'm excited to continue that as we dive into our next chapter three, uh, which is James chapter three. Uh, such a great, a great book of the Bible. Again, we, we, we don't we don't, we don't have any bad books in the Bible. All of them are powerful. They're all great. Um, but this chapter 3 in James is so good. And it's such a, such a relevant topic um, throughout time, but specifically for right now, where we're at in our world today. I love this chapter, and I'm so excited to be talking about it tonight. So I'm going to share a couple things with you just that uh, really stuck out to me. I, I don't want to be a long time, so I'm going to jump in and just share some of the things that are speaking to me in this book. Uh, James, he starts the chapter off talking about something so powerful, um, which is our tongue. Uh, and he, he talks about how powerful our tongue is. And he really dives deep into this. And he has some really, really strong words whenever you read your Bible. He has some really strong language about this tongue. Uh, he, he says that he says that the tongue is, is a little member. Uh, in verse 5 is where I'm at. He says the tongue is a little member and boasts great things. Uh, behold how great a matter a little fire kindleth. He talks about a ship uh, having a small rudder, but how it can steer the entire ship. And what he's what he's referencing here is our tongue. He's talking about how powerful our tongue is and how unruly uh, this tongue is. And and we know that he's talking about specifically about words and the way we use our words and the things that we say. And as you read on in the chapter, he he really breaks that down. And we'll talk about that in a moment. But uh, he, he's, he's, he's referencing our words. And uh, you and I both know that there's, there's, a, there's an old saying that, uh, that's out there that says, sticks and stones may break my bones, but words will never hurt me. And honestly, like that has to be the craziest thing I've ever heard um, because words really do matter. And James is telling us that I, I, the words that we use matter. Um, the, what we say to people um, the, the words that we use uh, in frustration, the words that we use uh, in encouragement. The Bible says that death and life are in the power of the tongue. And so the tongue is, is a very powerful tool. Uh, and James is saying it's, it's, it's really the most unruly part. Uh, and, then, and then he actually he talks even more about it when he says that it, it's like hell has set our tongue on fire which is so interesting to me. Uh, what, it, what it tells me is that the enemy wants to use our tongue. This is why it can be so unruly. Um, he even says that no man can tame the tongue. Um, but when he, whenever I was reading that and I saw that hell sets the tongue on fire, it made me think about another scripture in Ephesians chapter 6 where Paul is teaching the church about the armor of God, and he tells them to put on the full armor of God. And in verse 16 of chapter 6, he says that you should put on the shield of faith so that you can withstand, catch this, the fiery 
darts of the enemy. And as I'm reading about this in James 3, about the, the tongue being set on fire, and I'm seeing in Ephesians where Paul is warning about the fiery darts from the enemy, I just wonder if there was a correlation there. Could it be that these fiery darts are actually words? Could it be that since the, that, that, that hell has set our tongue on fire, that the enemy has set our tongue on fire, that at time, if, if he's using that as fiery darts, which is why Paul is telling the church, you got you to gotta use the shield of faith against that. And uh, so I'm processing that in my own mind. I don't, I don't want my tongue to be a tool of the enemy. I don't want my tongue to be a tool to be used for death or to be used as something that's wicked. And, 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 the, and we continue to read on here, and it, it talks about how can, the, how can the tongue bless God and curse man? The same tongue. And he said it ought not to be that way. Like we shouldn't do that. We we can't let our tongue say good things one day and the next day say terrible things. We can't one day be blessing God. Another way I read that is you can't you can't on Sunday be worshiping God and thanking God and blessing God. And then on Monday when traffic is bad and things are crazy and the kids are acting up and it's wild out there, and you use that same tongue to curse people, to to slander people, to gossip about people to when you're stressed out and you you begin to speak negative things that that ought not to be the tongue can't shouldn't be used for both good and evil he said a fountain is not going to bring forth sweet water and bitter water in other words your 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 words are not going to be or shouldn't be bitter one day and then the next day be sweet like you you can't you can't keep bouncing back and forth the tongue is going to have to be used for its intended purpose and surrendered to God and 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 yielded to his will and to his words it, it, he continued he said that a, a fig tree can a fig tree bear olive berries or is it is it a vine or is it a fig and so the whole point the whole concept here i think the whole thing that james is trying to get us to understand is the tongue is is wicked the tongue is unruly the tongue, even though it's a small thing, it's so powerful. It holds so much power and potential. Again, like the small rudder that can steer an entire ship, your tongue, my tongue, can determine the direction of my life. It can ter- determine the direction of, 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 our, of our day. It can determine the direction of our relationships, w- the way we allow it to be used the way we use it, the words that we say. The way I would like to put it is the words that we say matter. Words matter. And I believe that's why, that's why the Holy Ghost is so powerful. That's why the Spirit of God is so important. That's why I believe that whenever we receive the gift of the Holy Ghost, that that sign, that in evidence is that we speak in other tongues. I believe that's why speaking in tongues is so important because it shows that we have surrendered the most unruly part of ourselves to something heavenly, to something beyond us, to something supernatural. The only way, the only way that it can be tamed. The, it, James told us, man cannot tame the tongue. You in your on your best day, if you woke up and you worked out and you ate your Wheaties and you had a great full eight hours of sleep and everything in your life is perfect, can I tell you, you still can't tame your tongue. The only possible way that it can be tamed is if it's surrendered to God, if it's yielded to Him and to His will and to His purpose. And so, hey, I hope you take James 3. There's more here. I'm not going to give it all to you because I want you to be able to discuss it. I hope you take this, and I hope that you discuss it in your group. I hope you guys have some really strong conversation about this, and hopefully this challenges us to be mindful of the words that we use uh, during our week with our friends, with our peers, with our coworkers, with our family. Let's let our tongue be used to produce life, not death. God bless you. Hope you have a great small group.